Okay, hey folks, uh, it's Mark Locklear here. I uh, just want to make a quick video and introduce introduce you to NetBeans and uh, just maybe say a few other things about um, about Moodle and um, some of the organization of things there. So first, let's just uh, I, I just I've already graded some of the homework, so if you've gotten feed, feedback there, uh, again, this that that first program is just kind of a hello world program to introduce you to um, introduce you to Java and what it does, and I'm just going to walk through that uh, now, creating a new program, and just show you show you a few other few uh, a few other features of NetBeans. So I just clicked on the new uh, project button here, and of course everything we're going to be doing is a Java application so I can just double click on that and you can change these names if you want sometimes it's easier not to um, just be sure if you change a name here know that the folder locations and some other things changes and there's also some issues so I'm gonna go ahead and save or finish this project to create a new project and so this is generally what it's gonna look like just know that after the fact if you've created an application you go in and change some of these package names or applications names application names uh, you can run into issues just generally uh, whatever the public class name is here needs to mention needs to match the actual file name so if you go back and change a class name that doesn't match the file name uh, you're gonna have issues and your program won't compile or run Okay, so uh, I'm just going to real quick create a Hello World app here. Um, but before I do that, notice I haven't written any code at all. And I'm going to come up here and, and uh, press the Compile and Run button. And notice kind of the output of what happens at the bottom here. So notice just out of the box, we don't do anything at all and don't add any code at all to a vanilla Java program in NetBeans. It will build and run. Now, we don't get any output. I'm looking here at the bottom in the output. Uh, window. We don't get any output, but just just so you know that you know by default, uh, NetBeans kind of creates this uh, this basic Java package for you. Okay, so I think the assignment was just to create a Hello World app, and so I'm going to do system dot out. So notice a couple things here. Let's go ahead and look at that. Notice as I begin to type. I'm seeing these method names uh, as I type, and we won't. I, I don't want to get too far ahead of what we'll be learning, but this will be important later on. That part of what an IDE does is give you this environment. Whereas if you were trying, if you were creating this uh, from scratch inside of uh, a text pad or notepad or text wrangler or some text editor like that, that, this is one of the advantages that a true Java IDE gives gives you is it gives you all methods that are associated with a certain class and that a lot of that probably doesn't make sense right now but it will as we move forward so I'm just going to type uh, system dot out dot uh, just do print line and then inside here I'm just going to put some text and say hello world okay so a couple things to no notice here. One is before I and let's just go ahead and run this. So if I go ahead and run this, I should see "Hello World" here, and that lets me know my program ran okay. So a couple things to notice. First, one is that if I see this little red, if I see a red squiggly line inside the IDE, or if I see this little red exclamation point off to the side, the, your your program's not going to run. <laughs> so uh, anytime you're writing code right now, it's very simple. We've only got a, a couple of lines of code, but we're going to get into when we get 30, 40, and 50 or 100 lines of code. It's going to be important to look for those things inside the ID. And if you see that red squiggly line, or if you see that exclamation point there, don't even bother trying to run the pro program. Go ahead and fix fix that that error and fix those errors before you even try and run and compile the pro program. Also, notice one of the things you can do is if you hover. So notice. So I've got a red squiggly line here, and if I hover over that, any error, if you hover over any any error, and I can do that over here too, it'll it'll give you some kind of hint or or some kind of clue as to what the problem is. So in this case, it says, hey, I'm I'm expecting a semicolon at the end of this line. And again, sure enough, if I put a semicolon there, that, that gets rid of the error. Um, One of the other one one of the other advantages an IDE gives for us is um, the formatting that it offers you. And if you sort of let it work for you, 
um, it, it will help formatting your code. So generally, and this is just kind of software development 101, this is not a Java thing, this is a broader kind of software development issue, is you want neat and tidy looking code, right? Um, so you notice I just hit the return, um, I just hit enter on the keyboard, and notice it put things in in line with the previous line rather than having it, you know, left justified or right justified or anything like that. So let the IDE do a lot of the formatting for you. And again, let's say if I create a string um, test equals, and I'm going to put some text. So notice I'm just going to enter a single quote here, but notice what it did. It gave me two quotes and it centers the cursor in between those two codes, those two quotes, because it knows I'm about to write some test, uh, some text. So I just write that in, and then I press the end, and I hit the semicolon. So I just kind of show you that to show you that um, the ID offers a lot of advantages with regard to showing you methods that are available to you, and also from a formatting standpoint, um, it, um, it 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 speeds your software de development up. And uh, so that's all I'll say uh, about that. Uh, a couple of other things, just general. Um, again, I've graded about half the assignments already and a few things that I saw. Be sure you add, notice that by default, NetBeans puts this author information, or at least it should if you've got a vanilla in install and you haven't changed any settings. Um, it should put this author information in there. So you want to leave that, that in because generally two things I'll be looking for in all of your pro programs and one is that your name is in, in there um, if you've got some funky so by default I think it'll put the system username so if you've got something that's close to your your name it's fine you can leave that if it's not you know you may want to change that to like Mark Lockley if you've got S sexy mama as a, a login name or something like like that um, that that's kind of not what I'm looking for I'm looking for your name something that's going to identify you uh, as the author of the, of the code so if you've got some oddball name in there go and change that and put your your name your first and last name in or if uh, if your system name is kind of close to to that um, then then it's fine you can leave that the other thing is to comment code in general and of course to comment code we use the two forward slashes um, so if I put test here, obviously that's Java doesn't know how to recognize that. But then if I put, I comment it out, then that fixes the error. So um, right now, probably these next two assignments, you won't need to comment any code. But generally, what I'm looking for is as we get more in depth and start to do more sophisticated code, if there's sort of key parts of the code where there's a certain algorithm you're using or certain advanced pieces of code, it's just nice to have some comments there to generally tell me what we're what you're, you're doing and I'll, I'll kind of mention that as we get into more so some more sophisticated code uh, going forward I'll probably do some screencasts and I'll I'll, um, I'll kind of show you what I'm looking for there uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is in Moodle I added the uh, student files you're gonna need those so let me see if I can get this in here um, I added the student files here so I added this book Java files link and I mean basically if you just Google Merrick uh, Java code, his book code, you can go and download it from the web and then it also should be on your CD uh, with with your book but they're also here just as a con convenience. Um, so there's that. Also be sure and zip your files up even though I know this time we only had a single uh, Java file. Um, moving forward we should have multiple. I think this is the only assignment where you're going to have a single file but again be sure and look at this sample submission and what that looks like. Go ahead and zip them up. I really want all, I want the files in a zip file just the workflow that I use that's helpful for me to have them in a zip file and then uh, again you can sort of have a root folder there uh, where you kind of drop them all and then drop all of your projects or exercises in these in an individual folder and then inside that should be your dot Java files and then um, the other thing I was going to mention is the project make sure you understand this this project workbook so for instance chapter 2 assignment Let's see, we've got uh, the coding assignment you're doing, exercises 2 and 3 that are in the book, and then you're doing this project 2-1 that's in the project workbook, and make sure you understand the project workbook is up here. You click on that, and that's just kind of a supplemental set of exercises that you'll be working on. Um, 
Okay, I think that's it. Um, again, everything's uh, looking pretty good so far. Uh, there's a few of you haven't done Chapter 1 yet. That's due tonight, so be sure and get that in. And um, good luck. We'll talk soon.